Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com. Floracraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Floracraft.com. Styrofoamcrafts.com. Travel around the world on this season of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. We're visiting a different country each episode and learning about their culture and traditions through crafts. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors and markers and toothpicks and even a ruler on hand. Remember, be creative. It's fine to change colors or patterns to make your project your own. So let's learn about different countries with fun craft ideas. This week on Hands On, we travel to Italy. Italy is a country located in Southern Europe. It shares its northern border with France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia. The land known as Italy today has been the cradle of European cultures, such as the Etruscans and the Romans. Our crafts feature special products from Italy and the influence of religion. First is a Majolica-inspired dimensional decoupage a long name for an easy technique. Next, we find inspiration in the beautiful stained glass windows of the many Italian cathedrals. Then it's off to the quarry for a marble frame. Finally, we create a micro mosaic in a traditional religious design. Let's get started. Our first project is the Majolica Dimensional Decoupage. The name Majolica was derived from Majorca, the port from which Majolica was originally traded. In the 13th century, during the Renaissance, a small town in Umbria made use of a special clay to make Italian pottery. The clay is formed, dried, and fired for the first time. Then the cooled form is dipped into mineral oxide, creating a white opaque background on which the designs can be painted. This painted form is then fired again. For your project, you'll need a bifold foam core board, all different colors of tissue paper, white glue, various sizes of styrofoam balls and eggs, and then our basics. We have wax paper to protect our surface, an old paintbrush, pencil, a marker, scissors, and a plastic knife. So let's get started. The first thing that I did was created a mixture of white glue and water. It's two parts glue to one part water. Then I'm gonna take my tissue paper and I wanna cut out my leaves. So I'm gonna take my pencil, just trace around, and I've got layers of both the green and the turquoise tissue. And I'm just tracing out the shape. And of course, you'd be more careful and put it over to the edge. And I'm just going to cut out a whole lot of leaves to get all at one time. Now, the patterns for all of the pieces that you're going to see here will be on the website. Now, I'll set that aside. And then I'm going to start tearing out my tissue paper. So I'm going to start out with all different colors. I'm going to need red, and I'm tearing them into about one inch strips. You can tear or cut those, whichever is easier for you. So I'm going to put all of our colors here. So I've got my red, orange, purple, and yellow. And as you can see right here, I've protected my surface with some wax paper. So now let's start out with our lemon. To make the lemon, I'm going to take the egg and I'm going to cut it in half. Use just a sawing motion, and I'm using a serrated plastic knife, and there you got it. Now to smooth off any of these rough edges, all you do is rub the styrofoam on itself using the spare piece. And I'll brush those shavings out of the way, so we've got a nice smooth surface, and then I'm gonna pinch this the styrofoam will actually just bend, and you can also roll it onto the table to get the shape you need. So let's squeeze that a little bit more until we have a nice lemon shape. I'm going to brush this out of the way. So we're starting out with our lemon. The first thing then we want to do is go into our water and glue mixture, and I'm going to spread it on about 
oh, maybe half of this egg. Then I'm going to dip my brush right in the tissue paper and smooth it on. Take a little bit more glue and continue covering all the way along. Now don't worry, this glue is gonna dry perfectly clear. And you can overlap and put as many layers as you need to get it covered. So you continue on until the entire lemon is covered and it's gonna look something like that. Then we're gonna do the same with our grapes. And the grapes are just the half. I've cut these smaller styrofoam balls in half and I'm going to put the purple on this to make grapes. And you can see how easy that is. You're actually using the, the end of the brush to um, actually dip into the tissue paper. Overlap as much as you want. You can curl it towards the back. And you're gonna set these aside and let them dry. Now when they're totally dry, you can trim around these edges for any extra tissue paper. Now it's time to get our board ready. So I'm gonna take my board. Now you're gonna make sure that you have it opening where this seam is going to be at the top. So I'm gonna turn this to you. Then I'm going to take the pattern that's on the website and trace. So I'm gonna trace here, then turn it and fold and trace again. And I've got one traced on the back. So now what I'd like to do is do this border that goes around. And to get a nice even edge, I'm gonna put the straight edge or the torn edge closest to this line. So again, I'm gonna go back with my mixture, lay that down, and then I'm gonna continue going all the way around the board. Now don't worry if you've got an uneven line, it's okay. Always go with the second layer until you've got this entire border covered. I've got one here that's all covered. Now when it's dry, we can go back and trim this off on the edges. Just run your scissors along the edge. And you take time at home to make this nice and neat. Okay, now we're ready to build our board. As you can see, I've already added my welcome sign. Oops. And I'm going to lay that down in the center and I just put a layer of glue on. Now, when I start to glue down my shapes, I'm gonna to wanna to use the glue full strength. And now I'm gonna start building my design. So I'm gonna put my lemon in first then my grapes, and continue building until I get all of my shapes on. And you can follow the pattern that we've given you or make your own design. And then let's start adding a couple of the leaves on. Again, remember the glue is gonna dry clear, so don't be too worried if you have some excess glue. Now you'll continue building all the way around. And the last step is if you want to add a little bit of swirls or designs in, I'm just taking my marker here and adding those through. Now if you look at the finished one, you can see I've added fruit, we've got oranges, lemons, cherries and grapes, and all of our leaves. And that's our first project. Our next project is a cathedral window. Churches and cathedrals are an important part of Italian architecture. Inspiration for the cathedral window quilt pattern comes from the beautiful stained glass windows of Italy. Now here's what you'll need. I have two sheets of watercolor paper. I'm using an all-purpose glue stick. I have some coarse salt, also my watercolors and brush, and then I need something to make circles. So you can use a template or you can use a compass. Then I have a ruler, a stylus, or you can use an old ballpoint pen and scissors. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to create nine shapes for our cathedral quilt. So what I've done is cut out a circle. You, as I said, you can use your template and trace around and cut that out. And then I also need a square to fit inside that circle. So if this is a two and five eighths inch circle, the inside square is going to be one and seven eighths. Now these patterns will be on the website or you can cut your own. So now I'm going to lay this down Take my pencil, and I'm going to trace nine of these. 
and you're not going to cut these out at this point. So I'm going to just lay them next to each other. And then I'm going to go back and put my square right inside the circle, matching up so the corners come to the edge. And don't be worried if it's not exact, because what we're going to do is fold these down, and that's what creates the cathedral shape. And it'll look just like that. So now I'm going to go, I have nine of these laid out, and now it's time to score them. Now, as I said, you can use an old pen or a stylus if you have one, and we're only going to score the straight edges. So I'm going to lay my ruler down right along the edge, and that's why it's easier if you l line up your circles when you first make them. And I'm just going to run along the edge here. And then I'm going to turn it, do the same along this one, and then on this side as well. What we're going to do is that is going to give us a fold line so that it'll bend easier. So I'm going to set this one aside, and I've got one here that's all scored. As you can see, this bends much easier. Now we're ready to do our watercolor. We're going to paint each one of our cathedral squares a different color. So let's start out with blue. So I'm going to dip it into my paint. Make sure it dry knock off the excess, and then I'm only going to paint in the square. Now, you want to try to stay inside the lines, but it's not really important because that other part is going to fold over. So I'm just going to paint in, use plenty of water, and color in the center. Now, once you have one colored, you're going to take your salt and sprinkle it on top. And what this does just going to leave it dry like that. It's going to create this really pretty um, star pattern. Let's do one more. Let's do this one in orange. Clean up my brush a little bit more. And again, I'm going to get it all over. You can see I've got a little bit of blue in my brush, so that made my orange just a little bit brown. Remember, when these dry, all you're going to see is the star pattern. So we'll sprinkle my salt on again. Okay, and then we're going to let that dry. Let me set that aside. Now I've got one here that's already dried. The next step is to rub the salt off. So I'm going to just take my finger, rub it off, and you can see how pretty this pattern is. And you get a lot of variation. It almost looks like you used a printed fabric. And we'll set that one aside. Also, I have a sample here. I've also done it not just on watercolor paper, but you could do it on a brown paper bag. So I've got one here that's all done. Now it's time to cut these out. I'm going to cut around the outside circle, trying to stay as close as I can to on the line. And this is where those score lines that you made really come into play. I'm going to fold this in, fold all four corners, and then I'm going to take my glue stick, apply my glue, along the edge and fold it down and hold it in place. And I'd go all the way around. I've got a couple that are made here. And then I want to create a background to put these on. The patterns will be on our website. You can choose to do a square pattern or a, a scallop pattern. And this is what's known as a traditional nine patch quilt pattern. And then we're going to take each one and glue it onto the shape. You can move it around and choose what color you'd like and make your pattern. And then again, once you've got something that you like, we're going to go back with our glue stick, cover it up really well in the back. Oops, I've got two together here. Lay that one down. Let's switch that one. Put a blue next to it. And that's our finished cathedral window pattern. So let's take a look at our finished project. Our next project is a marble frame.
Carrera is a city in Italy famous for the white and blue-gray marble mined there. It's been used since the time of ancient Rome for famous sculptures by Michelangelo and in architecture such as the Pantheon. Here's what you'll need. I have a styrofoam sheet, a one-inch sheet. I also have poster board, white tissue paper, a feather, four different colors of paint, two shades of blue, a gray and a white, clear glue, and then our basic tools. I have a sponge brush, a pop top, scissors, and a ruler and a plastic knife. So here, let's get started. First thing we want to do is to cut our styrofoam into the shape. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to make an 8-inch square. Now you can really make it any size you'd like. I'm going to mark it here. And we don't want this to be too perfect. So I'm going to cut along. And I want to go 8 inches on this side as well. And then I want to cut the center out, and I want it to be two inches in. Let me do this so you can see it. So I'm going to go in here. Let's make it a little bit thicker, about two and a half inches. And at home, you'll take some time to go with your pencil and actually make, out, make your shapes nice and even. But don't worry, because we do want this to be a little bit irregular. Then to cut the styrofoam, we use a really nice, just a plain sawing motion and we'll saw all the way down. Now I've got one that I've already completed. The next thing we want to do is to make it look distressed. So I'm going to go around and cut out some ridges and a little bit of divots along the side just using my plastic knife. And can do as many or as little as you'd like. Now it's time to layer the tissue paper. I'm squeezing out some clear glue or you could use a white glue that dries clear. I'm going to dip in my sponge brush and put a really nice thick coat right on my frame. And I'm going to go all the way around the edges as well. Then I'm going to pick up my tissue paper, which I've torn into just some big sheets. I'm going to lay that down, then come back and do a second layer of glue right on top. Now you don't want this to be too smooth. You want it to be kind of wrinkly. So let's take another sheet of tissue paper. Put that down on top and just crinkle it up. And you're going to keep layering tissue paper all the way around until you've covered the complete frame and all the sides. Let's set that aside. Now our next step is to paint this. And you can see I've already put a coat of white paint on here. Let me take my brush. I'll dab that on so you can see because we want to have the paint be wet because we're going to model it a little bit. So I'm just dipping in white acrylic paint and going over that tissue paper to give it a really nice, thick, opaque look. Then the next step is, is we're going to dip into this light blue paint. I'm going to dip that in the side, into the white, and then I'm going to start dabbing that on. And it, as I said, it helps if your paint is a little bit wet until I get a nice color that I like. Let's just do one half of it so you can see the color. Then we're going to move on. I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to dip this in just a little tiny bit of water first. And I'm going to go into my silver. I want to add some depth. And all marble looks different, so there's going to be different colorations. Then I want to go back with my brush and kind of in diagonal lines, I want to do a darker line of the blue without it being deleted, diluted. Okay, then our next step is, is to take our feather. And I'm going to dip the feather in water because we want, and we're going to go into this blue, dark blue paint. Let's get a little bit more water. If you can look on my palette here, and you're just going to kind of draw squiggly lines. Now, if you don't like your line, you can go back in with your brush and blot it. Then our last step, once it's all completed, is to lay your frame onto a piece of board and cut out something that's just a little bit smaller than your finished frame, and then just add a pop top on the back as your hanger. So let's take a look at our finished frame. Our last project is a micro mosaic. 
A characteristic of micro mosaics is that the glass threads or beads are elongated. The Vatican Mosaic Studio created many of the micro mosaic religious icons. We're creating a beaded mosaic in a cross shape. Here's what you'll need. We have glitter glue in different colors. We have blue, red, and black bugle beads, some construction paper or heavy cardstock. You want it to be a little bit heavy, and a one-inch glass mirror. Our basic tools to have on hand are a pencil, scissors, and some tweezers. Let's get started. Our first step is to take our pattern, which is on the website, and I'm going to print it out on a piece of white paper, then cut it out, and then I want to transfer this design onto my cardstock. So I've laid it down, traced around the outside edge, and then using my pattern as a guide, I'm going to draw in my lines. So let's draw those on. Okay, next we want to add our mirror. I'm going to take my glitter glue, put a dab in the center, not too much because it's going to spread out to the outer edge, lay the mirror down, get that in place, and then I want to come around the edge, holding this in place, and put a little bead of glitter. Get my hand out of the way so you can see. When this dries, then it'll be perfectly in place. Then the next step is, is to add our black lines. Let's do one here. I'm going to put a line of glue. Now this is where it takes a little bit of patience. I'm going to take my beads one at a time and lay them in place. And I'm using tweezers, which makes it really easier because then your fingers aren't in the glue. Every once in a while you might have to go back and dip your uh, tweezers into, or uh, wipe them off on a paper towel. And I'll keep going along until I finish in this one section. Remember, some of the beads are going to be different lengths, so it might not be exact. So I'll go do all the black, and I've got one completed here where all of the black beads are added in. So I've got those four shapes. So now let's move on to our next shapes. Let's start with red. So I'm going to go, all the curvy lines are going to be red. So I'm going to Squeeze my glitter along. A tip to working with the glitter is to go right off the edge. Also, you can wipe it off on your paper towel if you need to. So let's go and add our red. Oops. Slide this over so it'll be easier. And we're going to just drop it into the glitter. What's really neat is the glitter is actually, it's the glitter and the glue. So we're doing two steps in one. Continue adding the red beads all the way along until all of the curvy sections are covered with red. Slide that one in. Okay, and I've got one that's all completed. So now I've got my red. The next step is to add blue. And blue is going to go along the outer edge. As you can see, I put some wax paper down on my work surface just in case I got any glitter glue there. So again, I'm going to go in sections, pick up my tweezers, and add my blue all the way along. And you're going to continue doing this. Now, you can see I chose red and blue for my icon, but you could choose any color that you like. And depending on what color construction paper or cardstock you used on the bottom will determine what color glitter you want to use. So I'm going to continue going all the way around. I hope you can see how pretty that looks. And I'm doing it just in a couple sections or a little bit at a time. Let's go on to the next section. And we'll keep adding beads. Another name for this elongated bead is called a tesserae. And that is the Italian term for that elongated bead or thread. It's not always a bead in, actu in the actual uh, micro mosaics. It can be stones, um, thread, embroidery. And I'm going to continue on around and I'm going to cover the entire surface. Now once this is all done, bring another one in. 
Then we're going to fill in, just like there were a micro mini beads with glitter in all of the sections. And if you need to, you can add a use a toothpick to uh, pull the uh, glue into all the crevices here. But we're going to cover the entire background. And let's take a look at our finished mosaic. And that's a little bit of Italy. Next time it's off to North America and the natural beauty of Canada. See you soon on Hands On. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is Program 1302. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands On Crafts for Kids, Crafts Around the World, Series 1300, is available for $49.99, plus $6 shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Travel to distant lands with Hands On. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products Incorporated, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. Elmer's.com Florcraft, the Dow Chemical Company, Styrofoam brand foam, make it fun. Florcraft.com Styrofoamcrafts.com